A powerful technology promises to shake things up in the classroom. This is Common Sense Explains. Hi everyone and thanks for joining us. I am Lorena Taboas. The release of OpenAI's ChatGPT is giving us a glimpse into how teaching and learning could be disrupted by artificial intelligence. The chatbot generates really accurate responses to user prompts worrying some educators that students will start using it to complete homework assignments. What does this mean for the future of education? Let's talk to Christine Elgersma, our senior editor of learning content and former English teacher. Christine, we obviously know that this technology isn't exactly like brand new. There's a lot of other AI tools out there. So how are students using tools like ChatGPT right now? I think like many of us, a lot of kids are just playing around with it. You know, I think it's kind of fun to see what it can generate and what questions it can answer, et cetera. In terms of the classroom, I think students are definitely using it to complete writing assignments, um, <laughs> which seemed obvious, but I mean, I think that is, you know, the the main way that, that students find this useful because uh, it's pretty easy if you haven't played around with it to type in a prompt that a teacher may have given to you and an essay sort of magically appears. So students are definitely using it to complete assignments. Right, so the reason particularly chat GPT is dominating headlines is because it's really, really sophisticated. I mean, it really is almost the most advanced technology of its kind. So what can teachers do to avoid cheating if they can? I think first and foremost, you know, the days of assigning an essay and letting students write it at home and then having them turn it in are kind of over uh, without ever seeing any of the process, parts of the essay, et cetera. So it's it, checking in on their writing style and really getting to know an individual student's writing. I know as a former English teacher, I took huge bags of <laughs> work home every weekend. Um, and even back before this type of technology existed, there were definitely times where I read an essay and say, this doesn't seem to kind of align with your former writing style. So you get to know uh, your students' writing. And I think that's one of the, the main ways, which is the tried and true, know your students, focus on the process, use formative assessments, you know, all of those great um, best practices around teaching writing. Um, and then, you know, if you want some further insurance, there are tools uh, to sort of check and see. So for instance, there's a Princeton student who developed uh, some technology that can detect if a student has used chat GPT in particular. Um, and I, it's called chat GPT zero. Um, and there are some other tools like it that people obviously are developing to, um, to act like as some teachers will uh, know what this is, turnitin.com, which is a similar plagiarism detection service. Um, so tech fighting tech is always kind of a, a dicey game. I think the best case scenario is that you adjust teaching and assignment formulation to match the tools that are available. Right. So we obviously know that students are using chat GPT. They're going to continue using it, especially as it evolves. But what exactly is chat GPT on the back end and what are the possibilities with this tool moving forward? Let me explain. Chat GPT is powered by a large language model trained on a massive amount of text data, about 500 billion words. It works by predicting the next most likely word when given a prompt. The model is trained using billions of parameters that are constantly readjusting until it can produce human-like responses to a range of questions. So aside from writing complex essays for students, it can also create lesson plans for teachers, it can generate accurate translations, and even write code. But there's also threats to consider, like its ability to write malware. What's most shocking is that the technology is still in its early stages. So those using ChatGPT are constantly feeding it more and more data, helping it improve the chatbot's capabilities. The next version of the model could have about 100 trillion parameters, approaching the number of neural connections in the human brain. So Christine, because ChatGPT is obviously getting a lot of information from other sources on the internet, what role do you think media literacy needs to play in the classroom so students can learn how to properly analyze and use the content they're getting from ChatGPT? 
I think that's a great question. And I think media literacy plays a huge role um, in terms of not only the ethics involved, you know, I think those are important conversations to have around any kind of generative artificial intelligence that's taking information from other places on the web, including people's original content, and then learning from it, maybe pulling from it. Um, so th that, in terms of media literacy, is a really important conversation to have. What are the ethics involved in this? Um, and then beyond that, how do we know where this information is coming from? Chat GPT, the, the developers themselves say, you're going to run into things that are either offensive um, or inaccurate, you know, things that are just wrong. So those are some other things that students in particular need to be aware of as they're playing with this tool and trying to use it. Um, what kinds of content, if they can understand how it works, I think that is a huge boon on lots of fronts, media literacy, and also, you know, whenever you can pull back the curtain on this kind of technology and show students how it works, um, it gives them a bigger picture, which I think ultimately when we think about technology, um, anytime you're focusing on the bigger picture, it invites a larger conversation because as we know, these things are just going to keep coming and developing. And as you say, getting smarter. So we, we need to have that bigger conversation. So I think you kind of mentioned it, that these things are going to keep coming. And I mean, we don't think of this now, but I love the comparison that a lot of experts are using about the calculator back in the 60s and 70s. I mean, it caused a lot of controversy back in the day when calculators were brought into the classroom. Teachers thought that kids weren't going to be able to learn proper math skills. So with that in mind, how do you think teachers can embrace this new technology in the classroom instead of being fearful of it? I think right now, you know, whenever we're we're first introduced, I think we have two um, two responses generally, even to something like books and the printing press. When when that happened, um, we have anxiety around this is going to dampen our own skills as human beings, or it's going to corrupt us in some way. Um, so the anxiety again, as a former teacher, I understand. Um, it's difficult and it's one more thing that teachers have to deal with. Um, that said, I think the way that we can embrace it right now in its current state is to explore it and discuss it with students. I think that is going to be, it, you know, banning it, I think, as we know, with young people usually is like, free for all it makes it makes the forbidden it makes you curious uh, yeah. it makes you curious yeah so kids are definitely going to want to check it out i think bringing it into the classroom and looking at its limitations its uses having that conversation about ethics that is instructional and that is a way to have that bigger conversation with students about technology in general how we can use it as a tool understanding its limitations, uh, its ethical problems. Um, so I think that is a way to actually have exercises and um, activities that are using chat GPT to discuss it in the classroom. Right. I think that is great advice for educators. Thanks so much, Christine, for talking us through all that. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. For educators that are interested in trends in education, you can subscribe to our education newsletter and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to hear from other common sense experts on all the media and tech topics you need to know about. Until next time. <laughs>